Tokyo City like a big playground When suddenly Batman burst from the shade And hit Godzilla with a bad grenade Godzilla got pissed and began to attack But didn't expect to be blocked by Shaq Who proceeded to open up a can of Shaq through When Eric Carter came out of the blue And he started beating up Shaquille O'Neal Then they both got flattened by the Batmobile But before we could make it back to the Batcave Abraham Lincoln popped out of his grave And took an AK-47 out from under his hat Blew Batman away with a rat at that tap But he ran out of bullets and he ran away Because often his crime came to save the day This is the ultimate showdown Of ultimate destiny Could guys, bad guys and explosions As far as the eye can see And only one will survive I wonder who it will be This is the ultimate showdown Of ultimate destiny Today, I am running late, about 12 minutes late, and let's see if we've, I've remembered that at the end of the program. So hopefully, I don't, uh, I try and sneak off early, try not to do that, unless there's just nothing else. Um, tried to get everything processed, there's a lot this week, uh, gonna try and get it all to you, uh, but uh, I could have done it a little bit better. Anyway, uh, so let's get on with it and uh, talk about how I got my game on. And I just have some notes just because I have some shout-outs today. And I want to let people know all about it. So uh, how I got my game on is I was playing some puzzles puzzles and empires, as I do. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to my uh, alliance. Make something else up. And uh, you should uh, join if you're ever on puzzles. Empires and Puzzles, a really great group. Uh, like I said, shout out to Mimi, Lonnie, Death Slacker, Tex, Chris, uh, Nubby, Cass Lopez, Icebreaker, General Mayhem, Edard, and Twisted Scooter. Um, just want to say hey, they're just all great people and uh, glad to have them in the Alliance and uh, just been having a good time. Uh, right now what I've been doing is in spite of the fact that there are wars to be won, uh, achievements to occur, I've just I've been wanting to have a panda army. And you know how it goes, you know, as a gamer, you just sometimes want something, and I, I wanted a panda army, and so I've been working really hard on my panda army. Um, I, I was working hard to try and, and get pandas. And uh, the only one that's going to be hard to get is the Legendary 5-star because you can't, like, in this game, it's all by chance. So I have to chance into the last panda, which is a 5-star Legendary. Technically, it would have been the same with the other ones. Well, the common, you know, I get him all the time. but And most of the secondaries, like, uh, the other... One panda, although I've only got, I think I've only got maybe two of the four star before. So it's a little bit harder to get. So I've been uh, working on those and I've been leveling them. And uh, I talked to uh, my elder and friend Lonnie, who told me uh, that what I needed to do was work hard on, um, on getting the, uh, Oh, I see. Okay. Um, was get, um, make sure and just keep grinding out, um, levels so that I could get lots of, uh, troops and just start, you know, factoring. So I'm, I'm, uh, pushing out about three different groups of, uh, troops, uh, not troops, but, uh, heroes a day and grinding those into, um, into levels and it's going pretty good um i've been trying to get just different things um to make more um pandas like the last panda that i tried to do um i it was like a grind because what i was trying to do was just get enough so the thing is is i got them all leveled but um you have to have your uh your last skill leveled in order for the token. So that was a thing. And welcome to whoever you are. I uh, can't see you on the chat, but uh, welcome to Gaming Fix. And uh, so, yeah. So anyway, the tree was uh, open. 
and uh, I put in the those levels, and now I'm working on Hatu, and uh, he is been leveled one time so far, and now hopefully I should be able to level him. I'm guessing his next level will occur probably tomorrow or the next day. Sometime this weekend, maybe. I'm not sure. He's uh, He needs to level to 50, and then he needs to uh, once again be ascended. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, we're at war right now, but I didn't jump in. And uh, hopefully we're not like right in the throes of war. I noticed my phone's not doing well today. I'm not sure if it's going to charge at all today. I'm a little worried about that. that um, hopefully it's not dying, uh, especially since I just topped it up but anyway um and then also this week i did some pathfinder and ran some some folks in pathfinder unfortunately uh, one of my players wasn't able to play and sometimes that happens and you got to kind of swing with it and uh people we've kind of been talking and we do have it set up so that people can can run other characters and a lot of times they don't want to but this time um we were able to get some uh run character sometimes you just you know you you play or it just happens so we swung with that and uh it was a lot of uh like maintenance stuff because last last uh game the uh ship was totally uh not quite totaled but a lot of damage was to it by a gar fish, like a giant gar fish that um, just ate into the hull. And uh, when it ate into the hull, of course, that's not good for ships. And so they're uh, rebuilding it along the coast and kind of dealing with coastal fighting. Um, have a real, not a real encounter, but uh, dealt with like a, a gorilla and some unruly pack passengers that kind of thing so this game should be pretty cool um either it'll be more um more of the same or it'll be i think it'll be a little bit um a little different maybe some uh you know you never know maybe some wildlife will get in on the action or something We'll see, and uh, pretty soon they should be going. They're they're slowly going to a new uh, location, new uh, new adventures. So that'll be kind of cool, and uh, I uh, I look forward to that. That's that's going to be a good time, and uh, that's basically what I did. Um, I'm trying to think, yeah, that's about it. It wasn't you know sometimes. Uh, it, it's a more of a role play game where you're just trying to get things done. And sometimes it's more of a fight. It's a good mix. It just depends. And we did have a, uh, some pretty crazy things that happened in the last game. So this game had to kind of deal with the uh, easy games. Now it's possible. It's interesting because, uh, I rolled a, uh, a possibility of a, major thunderstorm and uh i'm like well you know i really don't anticipate like another act like that so i'll i'll roll a 1d100 and as long as you don't get super low then you know we're fine and then they got super low and i'm like oh i guess we're not fine and uh so i kept getting super low until the end and the last one was was high enough that not that the rain stopped, but it was going to be. Um, if not, it would have been a storm and the boat would have capsized. And I was like, I really don't want to capsize the boat. Because then they'll have no boat. And then all these people will probably drown. And they'll be kind of forced to be adventuring off of this one place they don't want to be in. And. It didn't look like fun or or you know player death is always a thing too so i'm glad that the odds were actually in my favor this time and uh it's really interesting i've been doing some work on, on the upcoming dd game Billcraft on saturday 
if you're interested, um, let me know in the chat if you're in the area. Um, it's in uh, Los Angeles. It, it's it's basically in Los Angeles, but it's in Bellflower, California. It's uh, 9 to 2, and we do have some uh, spots available if uh, somebody wants to play. Help you with your character, get you all set up, and uh, have a good time that way. So, yeah. So, uh, today, I'm, if you notice, not wearing a green shirt or gray shirt. This is my Orange County Saber Fighting shirt, and I wore it just because... You know, one thing that's really cool with a shirt like this or a shirt is a lot of times I've been part of a lot of groups and uh, basically the opportunity of, you know, you go and you want a shirt and then they don't have, and like you have to get all the orders out. And it's like one thing that's really nice with Tee Public that I like is that you can just put the put the stuff in. So it's been really nice because we have a lot of new merchandise uh, available to support the channel, um, to support Gaming Fix. And uh, there's, of course, the 123 shirts, which are out, which we now. And then also we have a signature shirts that we're going to be doing this week. And those are going to look kind of like the... Uh, the other shirt where they're going to say gaming fix in the front and i'm going to try and put it pocket size but i don't know if that'll happen but on the back is going to be our signature art from when we uh from the uh, web page so uh some really nice you know really good pictures on the back of the uh of the magazine covers that we used. So uh, some of this be cool. There's, I th there's gonna be fire with chain. There's gonna be, I think, the motorcycle um, with the lights, like a big light cycle kind of a thing. And uh, definitely check it out. Just go on to tpublic.com slash stores slash gaming hyphen F-I-X-X. That's uh click dot slash stores slash stores slash gaming hyphen f-i-x-x and uh right now until the 27th of february uh all shirts are uh 13 dollars all the classic tees are 13 dollars and uh 35 percent off site wide so that'll be cool so like if you wanted to stick if you just have been wanting to support the channel in any way go and get some stickers or if you go and get some uh because we'll definitely have the stickers um available with the uh with the print so that'll be cool um if you want to or if you uh want to support the one two three or any of the things that we're offering then yeah, you just go on to uh, T Public, and uh, it's counted right now, so it's grim. I'm seriously thinking about getting a hoodie. Um, with it, it'll either be a, a black and white hoodie, or it'll be um, a signature gaming fix hoodie, and I haven't decided which, but it'll probably be really cool. So I definitely uh, think it'd be a, a pretty awesome thing. Um, and I'm definitely going to be looking into this. Uh, I'm definitely going to be uh, getting something. Because like a hoodie at 35% off, I think is, might be close to 20 bucks. Actually, you know what? I don't have to guess. I'll, I'll look it up. Let's see how much. T Public. much I do want to get a hoodie I'll look it up and if I get the hoodie uh next week I'll show it to you because it should I'm guessing that uh like if you make your order today then you would get it uh next week easily or like later later this week because I know when uh they had they had a really cool thing where they were offering things for cheaper 
um, as like a bonus, they offered me a free shirt. And when I put in, I still got it pretty quickly. Uh, let's see here for the, cause I have the vampire shirt and uh, eventually we're going to have the D and D shirt. I just haven't put it together yet. So I'm going to be pretty cool. All right, let's see how much it would be. Let's check out my storefront. And this should be about the same price. I don't know if it'll be different, but if I was going to get the It's funny, right now, the uh, gaming fix stuff is actually um, harder to find. But let's say I wanted to get this. Oh, that's weird. I'm going to see how much it would be to get a uh, hoodie here. And we're get, we're thinking about. I'm also going to uh, probably be putting together some Easter stuff, uh, which I may be calling um, either bad eggs or something like that. Um, it's going to be. It'll probably be um, like more fun than um, negative, like we did with the uh, like we did with uh, Valentine's Day. So let's see. There's just like a lot of people being super negative about Valentine's Day, so it just struck me as a cool thing. All right, so the hoodie. Is. Okay, so normally it would be $45, and right now it is $35. And let me see if in my size, which is. I don't know, like 2XL is usually pretty okay, but like I'll, well, I'll tell you I wanted a 3XL. See how much. Okay, so it's an extra dollar. It's uh, $36 for. So that's cool. So that's, uh, that's a pretty cool little deal. So about, you know, 37 bucks. So. Yeah, so go on to T Public. Uh, we don't. I don't want to spend all time with it, but um, if you help us out with that, it helps us out, which is why I let people know that uh, T Public is a really good thing, and uh, we really appreciate it. Um, so, a company called um, um, Fox. Let me look this up real quick. Why don't I get the stories on Google? I was getting them on my phone. Anyway, let's see. Hasbro shareholder, um, launches a campaign, uh, the, and what they're trying to do is get wizards to spin off or Hasbro shareholder launches a campaign to spin off wizards of the coast where they're proposing a new board for wizards. And uh, this is being proposed by, and I'm going to try and get all this information out. It's going to be a little bit of a delay. And um, sorry about that. Uh, the, the information's not on here either. That's great. Oh, here we are. Um, one of uh, Hasbro's top shareholders to launch a campaign to overhaul Hasbro's overall business strategy. Alta Fox Capital Management, based in Fort Worth, Texas, holds 2.5% of the outstanding shares of Hasbro, Inc. 
headquartered on Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and is a toys and entertainment company that acquired Wizards of the Coast. Um, oh, outstanding shareholder of Hasbro's. Head, that's weird that they have Hasbro. Anyway, Wizards of the Coast, based in Renton, Washington, is publisher behind the Dungeons and Dragons tabletop franchise. Okay, so basically, and they just announced that its current president and COO, uh, Chris Cox, will move up to the CEO division of Hasbro as of February 25th and will be succeeded by, pre by new hire, um, Cynthia Williams. And uh, in an open letter to shareholders dated February 17th, Alta partner Connor Haley argues that Hasbro's overall business strategy, which it calls its brand blueprint is ineffective and has led to consistently stagnant stock prices and a loss of market share over the course of the last five years. As part of the five-step plan to address the perceived issue, Haley and Alta Fox have begun a website, Free the Wizards, which sounds like um, good fun if you're into uh, stockhold, you know, shareholding and uh magic cards um we also fox cannot stand idly by as hasbro board of directors the board uh, makes unenforced errors in capital allocation corporate governance and investor communication uh, haley further accuses hasbro of a perverse executive compensation structure where hasbro senior leadership and directors have allegedly received more than 180 million over the course of the last five years relative underperformance in the market Haley claims the succeeds that paid to the board of directors of apple inc and many other world-class companies of greater scale and with superior results one part of ulta fox's plan involves wizard of the coast which is hasbro's hidden gem arguing that hasbro itself doesn't seem to recognize or appreciate the value that wizards brings to its portfolio as for ulta fox's numbers wizards overall revenues grew 42 um, percent in two, 2021 to nearly one, $1.29 billion, which increased its contribution to Hasbro's overall earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization from 25%. I'm sorry if this is boring. I can understand. Put another way, Ulta Fox claims that Wizards is currently responsible for nearly half of Hasbro's pre-tax revenue by itself due to the steady recent growth of both D, uh, Magic and D&D. And so this is basically what they're saying. And they proposed uh, a board of directors of five people. Uh, that was this week. And then there was a response. Uh, Wizards of the Coast split from Hasbro unlikely, says analysis. As a response. Wizards of the Coast split from Hasbro's unlikely uh this is from comicbook.com the other one was from geekwire a proposed plan to break which is of course from Hasbro is unlikely to go forward uh says one long time analysis of the company last week activist investor alta fox capital management announced okay uh, while alta fox laid out the case to the public with their own website and appealed to disgruntled magic the gathering fans According to analysis, Brett Andrus, the split only has a 30% chance of actually occurring. Current market environment, i.e. Um, pandemic, beneficiary, multiples, SPAC fatigue, does not exactly lend itself to the business's NT setup or selling of the Watsi story as the business likely uh, digests outsized growth in the years ahead, addressed said basically which is the coast current high profit levels aren't necessarily sustainable as they were partially caused by a complex related the pandemic market okay so what they're basically saying is they don't think that wizards is is as viable when there's no pandemic but there's there's a really good argument for this because there's a lot of storytelling um and movies to be made and entertainment and uh so that's kind of the argument alta fox is going with so uh, it's kind of an interesting story. We'll kind of follow it where we can um, and try not to be too boring about it because obviously it's not a super fun uh, story. Um, Hype base. 
There's a new game out um, called Hyperspace that is an MMO uh, free to play. And it's uh, an MMO as well that I believe takes place in space. It may not. I don't know. Uh, Run out of drink too. Ah. All right. Hyperspace is a free-to-play first-person shooter battle royale game developed by Ubisoft Montreal. Oh, it's Ubisoft. Well, I did not know that, but uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. So uh, good luck finding out about that. Uh, the GDC, is, which is the Game Development Conference, is going to be in March of 2022. So if you ever wanted to uh, find out more about game development or, uh, you know, I don't know if it's let me see if it's going to be in person or not this is always a question with conventions nowadays let me check real quick here and also check um price of tickets the um game convention conference is It's going to be live in San Francisco, and it's March 21st to the 25th. And uh, uh, I'm guessing that they're requiring having vaccination and a um, card. Of course, that's their call. While that's loading, I was going to, I don't know. Things take too long to load. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, I hope we're not having too much dead air. And uh, turn on chat. Yeah, unfortunately. uh, Oh, so we have Crip Crip Pop on today. Hey, Crip Pop. Um, so critical pop, I have no reason to shorten it. Sorry, man. Anyway, um, uh, it's actually $37 for the hoodie. So it's not too bad. Um, I'm probably going to, like I said, I'll probably pick it up. Um, and, uh, this is good. I'm glad this is all working right now. So the, the, as far as the uh, Game Developers Conference, passes and prices, uh, let's see, yeah, here's health and safety right off the bat, figured. All right, so what they're doing is, uh, it's thrilled to bring the game community safety measures, mid following, uh, we are enacting strict vaccine and, and mask mandates, which include booster shots for all those who will receive them. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So what they're doing is they're requiring boosters, which I'm not sure. Because, like, my vaccine card, I don't even know if it if it mentions boosters. So that's something. Um, and uh, I'm going to actually go into another one because I have two conventions that I was going to bring up. Yeah, I know. Well, what seems a bit sad that they're having a, a completely open con or that they're requiring a booster um, mandate? I don't know. I don't have it on my card. I do not have my boosters on my card. So if they said, hey, you need boosters, I would have some problems. I don't know. Um, so 
TFCon in Los Angeles is uh, TFCon Los Angeles is happening, and oddly enough, it's in Burbank, probably because they wanted to uh, use Los Angeles because it's the bigger name. Just like if something was in Bellflower, they'd probably say it was something in Los Angeles. Um, but it is in Burbank, and I have just registered for it, and I'm super excited, and I'm going to go. So if you want to go, uh, if you're going to be going to the con, which is Transformer, the Transformers convention uh, in Los Angeles, please uh, drop a line, let us know, and I would love to uh, meet and uh, play some either play some Transformers stuff or uh, go to a panel or something like that. That would be awesome. Um, it's in Burbank. It's on Friday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday, and I'm not sure what weekend. And uh, I'll get that information. Um, I should get that information. Uh, but w one thing that I thought was interesting is that um, you can either go with a vaccination card or – a COVID test. So if you've, if you're willing to take a COVID test that says that you're negative, then you're able to go in just as easily as if you had a vaccine um, card. And now it's like, I'm worried because I'm like, I don't see my vaccine card. So that's what I know folks is I'm looking for my vaccine card to make sure I know where it is because that's very important. And uh, it clearly keeps coming up. So I want to make sure that uh, that's uh, findable. Let me look at TFCon and find out what the dates are. Oh, the date is uh, March 11th to the 13th. So it's coming up pretty quick. That'll be a pretty good time. I'm looking forward to it. I've never been to a Transformers convention, and I'm harsh. In other words... Anytime I go to something, I, I'll, I will definitely let people know about it, you know, for the convention. But this is a this is a funsy thing for for me, really. I like Transformers, and uh, that's why I am on the Transformers thing. And I, you know, it's a thing I like to do. So, in other news, a uh, 16 year old chess champion Grandmaster Prague beat the first ranked uh, Carlson in a chess match um, so that was pretty cool um, and uh, when asked for comment he basically said that he was uh, didn't feel like getting dinner at 2 a.m. or something like that so priorities and uh, but uh, really impressed and Carlson was pretty impressed that uh, this uh, young grandmaster beat him and uh, these all go under the the, uh, like under my ass of that I can't possibly um, I'm not that good at the uh, at the chess uh, I was part of a chess organization because there was no game club at Cerritos and that's where I met my friends uh, John Sendry who is a master and uh, another friend and we just played chess I was not good at chess um, I never beat my dad at chess uh, I was the best I ever got was uh, like a Queen's Garde, where basically you uh, a stalemate with a queen, which isn't amazing. But been amazing at throughout my life. So you know, it's a thing. Um. But anybody who can do really well, I you know I've always been very impressed. Like I, one of my favorite movies is Searching for Bobby Fischer. Um, also love the series um, about chess set in the '60s with the Corvair. Queen's Gambit was really good. Um, I've liked a lot of those type of movies and uh, really enjoyed them. And so this is uh, there's another one about Bobby. Fisher, I can't think what it was, um, where he was going to meet Spassky. He was like when he was uh, illegal, he illegally went to um, uh, 
way of it's their car too so it's really cool um but it's it's uh it was really good um there's also the one with fast either uh, chess is just i think chess is really cool one thing that you find out as a uh when you go to game conventions, especially uh, when you own a store and you're pitching various games that people want to try and sell, one of the things that everybody is trying to reinvent is chess. There is, when I first went to, uh, when I first went to Jet SoCal, there was a chess, um, somebody had created a, like this monstrosity of a thing where it was a board that was like a circle and had all the different chess pieces, but they were all different colors. And so you could like this weird multiplaying chess game that everything worked kind of weird. And I, people just, they're like, let's, let's improve chess. There's a, there's a very wild hair. That bunny is just straight up everybody with the whole uh, chess thing. And uh, there's Nightmare Chess, which is, that's a Steve Jackson game um, variant, which uh, just adds like rules when you're playing chess. Uh, Bandai even came out with some giant chess pieces with, uh, like with staff that you could collect. Uh, and then there's a uh, fantasy chess where the chess pieces have different rules. Um, it's a, uh, it's just interesting. There's a lot of people that want to reinvent chess and, and, uh, just make it this massive undertaking that, you know, when what's nice about chess is it's simple. Once you get the game which the game is very cheap like you could get a nice chess not a nice chess you could get a working chess set for six dollars a nice chess set for like twenty dollars and have it for the rest of your life you don't even have to have a chess set to play chess because someone you know wants to play chess with, with you they'll probably have a chess set finding a chess set is easy and so the idea of just like having to change change chess all the time is really strange to me but uh i thought that was odd so anyway um talking about breaking up with uh dungeons and dragons this is an article off of i really should let me let me look that up because i want to give the person credit because we we do that um that's the right thing to do so let's go into google real quick and get that out there to people And uh, while I'm doing that, uh, I invite you to have a sandwich special in Hornbrook, California, by the Klamath River. Uh, it's a really nice river, uh, and you can also get some floaties. And sometimes um, they have raffles for fishing gear, and that's at Bait and Bites dot com if you go go to hornbrook uh you go to go into hornbrook then you can go to bait and bites and uh there like i said there's great sandwich specials i don't know what the special is today um i think it's wednesday it's usually pulled pork and a soup but if it isn't then you know when you go to Hornbrook to get your, you ask for the wrong sandwich, just say that cousin Frank was wrong about the sandwich. And I don't know. I don't know what they'll do, but they'll probably be really happy to see you and happy that you came all the way to Hornbrook because you were watching a, the, you know, gaming fix, and you came all the way to Hornbrook to uh, go down the stream and have yourself a sandwich. Anyway, uh, that's Hornbrook, California, by the by uh, Eureka, off of the Klamath River. 
and uh, breaking up with D and D. Oh, that's wrong. <sighs> I am yeah, breaking up with is from Tor.com. Uh, so basically, um, so I read a little bit about this and basically the whole idea is that if you're um if you're a, is uh this this guy started out as a dm or you know given the box set and he basically first time he ever played and uh he had played no 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 he played dnd before but he was asked to be the dm because he had played before and he had all these cool ideas uh of where he was going to take his players and of course, the thing is that you have to understand as a uh, as a dungeon master is the players are going to take you places a lot of times more than you are going to players, and that's kind of an important thing to understand is that you want to tell a story, but you got to understand that even though you're telling a story, and people are there at your table, and there's a lot of terms like that, but at the end of the day you're all still players of a game. It's just, you've been um, brought in to kind of do the thankless job of, of telling the story, the combat, putting all the things together. And a lot of times people are very appreciative of it, but the reality is that it is more of a workload. And sometimes you will create, I've done this myself, You'll create like a whole scenario with all of these different um, plot points and your players will just pretty much turn their nose at it and go do something else. Or you like, oh, this person's this, I, I had this happen. Um, this person was like this kind of thing. And I thought, oh, cool. Well, I'll just put like, you know, someone that's kind of like them that, they could talk or whatever and they just started talking it's like well just because i'm a halfling doesn't mean i'm going to talk to you i mean why would i do that and i'm like going, okay so it, and it's just like sometimes it's like there's a weird hardness that comes from these players where it's just like well you know just because i'm this or just because i'm that you know why would i why would i participate in that and it's, you're like why are you being difficult Cause that's a thing also it's just like you could have all your stab blocks set all your encounters that are going to happen and you could just totally get swerves and uh oh and and if if you are our new, new dm i i would really recommend um checking out uh the uh, cinematic sorcerer solars um on back in the deck on dark side of the room all week he's been doing um dungeon master workshops and they're really good um just as far as like things like managing expectations uh, just understanding where people are coming from and uh a lot of his series i think are really good for that like because basically uh it's a good way to get um a lot of information and just kind of like uh, possible pitfalls, things like that. And you can always ask him questions too, which I think are really good. Uh, you go on to back in the deck uh, underscore P, which is, I'm sorry, it's you go on to Twitch TV slash B I D underscore P. And it's going to be, I, I want to say at three o'clock today. Yeah, if you go on three o'clock, I'll probably actually be there. Um, as well so if you want to check that out it's pretty cool i would uh i would recommend it um but anyway uh, where he's talking about these things and and this is something that i've noticed uh being an s being a dm i've been a dungeon mastering since i was 
13. And I'll tell you, my friend, uh, you know, you want to create things that are like really cool because like novels have stories and these stories have like, you know, like, game changing legendary type objects and so what i did is i created this mirror the idea being that it would just be this game the story breaking th but i didn't really consider the like the stats of the characters or any of those things i was just more concerned about the idea of a mirror of life stealing that could steal god's lives so that that way, just so you'd have like this big epic tale and not exactly considering the amount of uh, power that those players would have and that you'd be playing a different game as you're playing a different game, you kind of have to up the level because like you could do that, but then you have to make sure that what happens to these, you know, basic legends now that they're on the other side of the world because like that anything could you know could beat them are they now you know are they now going to be susceptible to some kind of mass event well, that's what i would do if i was going to upgrade you know players that much in a story like that i would have something like that but when i was 13 i didn't really think about that i was just like oh this is a really cool story and if we take this really cool story and we take this really cool um you know premise then we'll be off to the races and of course wasn't very good and in fact there was a point where um i was worried that like my my game what my my storyline wasn't that good and i actually had some of the players they were thinking about like leaving the dungeon and then they decided to come back into the dungeon and it was weird because it was like it was a shared world so it was kind of like the only thing that was my dungeon that was part of that world was the dungeon that i was running for my friend so when they left they'd kind of be not under my guys because we were kind of like sharing the game type thing and it was just a different way of playing. Like there was things like that I haven't dealt with in years, like, you know, system shock, you know, I haven't dealt with like system shock roles in forever, but like system shock roles used to kill. Cause it, it, you know, back in the day, like now it's like, okay, you're almost down, but roll cause you're going to bleed a point. Cause if you hurt, but, uh, back then it was like, oh, You've taken this much damage, and yeah, you could survive, but roll system shock. So it was actually kind of the opposite that my DM did, which made it a very hard game because basically if you took, say, half damage, you could still die from the amount of damage that your body took. So it's kind of like playing a, an entirely different game because, like, instead of, you know, like right now, if you play... Uh, say d20 a normal d20 game and you take uh like 15 damage and you're at like 52 then you just go down and you're fine you know this way if like you took 25 then it'd be like oh 25 from lightning damage that's a system shock roll oh i'm sorry but you die you could actually die from from that roll even though so that was kind of a different thing that, that we had that we don't have now. So it was a little harder, but. But my point is, is like, I've, I've run a lot of games and uh, I've run a lot of different, different games besides uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but I've run primarily Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, um, RPGA back in the day, role-playing game association, which was. The Dungeons and Dragons uh, organized play before it was uh, Adventure League, and uh, I've been an assistant. Um, I've been a lieutenant 
court. What is it? Uh, uh, Lieutenant something organizer. I can't, I can't think of the. I cannot think of what it is. But and uh, I've done a lot of stuff, and I've seen a lot of stuff. And one thing that I will say is it's good to be on your toes because, yes, you might. And, and that's one thing that's really rough when you're running um, like a society game is you have this amount of stuff and they give you this amount of information. And then you've got to convey all that information to your players. So that's that's a that's a toughie. Uh, sometimes you kind of have to figure out what can I do? where I'm interceding or giving information out. Like for instance, there's like a bar of text. It's like this amount of information will be given to your players. Okay. And they ask some question that's not in that bar of text. And then you have to somehow figure out how to convey that information. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a tricky thing being in. Like I said, from, age 13 i'm now 47 years old so i've been gaming for over a long time if you want to actually do the math you can but i'm not helping um but i've done it for a long time and the one thing that i i've always have when i'm at my best like there's, there's been times when i've done oh good that's what I figured. Well, it's a picture, but it didn't it didn't come through, so I don't have to worry about that. Um one thing is when you do something uh well, I've done something for a long time. One thing that I've done is like when I do a lot of preparation, like a lot of preparation, like this is exactly how this will happen. Sometimes just don't have as good of a time because if they go and they do something else and I'm not really thinking seat of my pants, then I'm not ready to go. So now I just, I'm always at the seat of my pants. And when I'm at my best as a DM, I've got 15 books open because I'm just ready to go. It's like, oh, you want to do that? Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. This happens. This happens. Roll this, roll that. And we're good to go. So that's uh, something that I'm ready to, you know, to go. And I'm always willing to look at just different supplement ideas and make things interesting so one thing that i found really useful is i like the dm dave's thing um uh, solar on his uh the cinematic sorcerer has been really showing a lot of he's been showing some tools so those are good too um but it's basically i just you know, if I have dice and books, then I can run something. So it's a pretty, it, and, and I've done a lot of different running and different things, but I understand that obviously if you go in as a, as a DM and you're like, this is going to be easy, then you're going to find out that it's probably not going to be completely easy. And if you think that you're just going to like, tell people, Hey, this is what we're doing and they're going to do it. And because one thing that's on every, almost every role-playing book or D and D book, which is you can do anything that you want. This is a, this is a factor within almost all of, of the games. And you'll say it over and over again. You can do anything you want. Okay, cool. Well, if I can do anything that I want, why are you telling me that I can't do that? There's got to be a way in which I can do that, right? Now, the problem is, is like certain parameters. You're like, hey, this is something that's not, you know, something that we can do. Or um, basically there's rules. So in other words, yes, you can do that, but this will happen. And some people might say, oh, well, that's the same thing, but it's not really. It's not the same thing as, as, um, as saying you can't do this. It's saying that if, if you do this, then the Queen's Guard will be very angry. Because if you start like digging up skeletons and making a, necro a necrotic army, 
that you're going to use to take over the world, then there's people and places that are going to be like, hey, we don't like that, you know, because those are our ancestors you're digging up or, you know, a lot for a lot of reasons, right? And my chat really went away. Oh. Um. So yeah, that's a thing that uh, definitely happens. So you have like so societal norms that have been set up in the game that might stop uh, stop you from doing something. And uh, I had a big story, uh, basically of a developer who was caught for uh, he was supposed to be developing and he ended up uh, finagling the money but I don't I don't have it in front of me so I'll probably deal with that next week but uh, we got a chance to talk about you know basically being a DM and if you have anything uh, that you want to talk about about being a, a dungeon master I'd be happy to uh, to discuss it. Like, what are the falls or what what ways to to have a plan? Like, one thing that I learned um, that I really like is making sure to understand your turn order. Because if you understand your turn order in a fight, it helps a lot. Like, making sure and having a good tracking system for when people are going to fight, because that makes things a lot faster. You know, having your initiative all set up and ready to roll. I mean, like, I, I can do initiative quickly. The method that I always use, and um, it's just very simple. If um, you have two players that are going at the same speed, that basically you have, like, you say, okay, what's your uh, modifier? What's your modifier? If your modifier is higher, then, you know, then you have a better, better thing. So, yeah, so thanks for tuning in, and uh, it's been good chatting. I said, hurt you. Please support us by, hurt you. Sorry. Please, please support us by going on to tpublic.com slash gaming hyphen F-I-X-X. There'll be lots of shirts, and uh, those help us out. And uh, we always post these shows on YouTube and on Facebook. And uh, hopefully we are rounding a bend. It is uh, is Gaming Fix 98, so two more until 100. And I'd like to do something for 100. I'm hoping for guests or hosts or something um, special. So um, maybe you'll have some suggestions. And if you do, then uh, let us know. Love to have that. Uh, as far as Ultimate Showdown, uh, we are working on it, but it's it's going to be an interesting process because it's going to be all visual. So it has to be a little bit different than it was the first time because it has to be set so that people can kind of see it. So it'll be a little bit different, whereas audio is a little easier to kind of set up. So we're working on that. Anyway, I will see you all Wednesday at 11 a.m. And uh, take care, everybody.